today's video, I'm going to show y'all a uh, pretty much how to build a 9 volt battery eliminator. Okay, now uh, something I'll clue y'all in on um, usually most transformer uh, wall warts, uh, whatever you want to call them, that you get are usually higher rated than what they say on them. So, meaning that they push out a little bit more volts what they're regulated at. So, say for instance, uh, most of the 9 volt power packs I tried around here were showing me upwards of about 15 volts and that was just way too high for what I'm trying to use this for. Um, the milliamps is the big deal really is what you really want to worry about and de depending on the device that you're trying to power you really need to know what milliamps that is going to be drawing. For this particular deal what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this eliminator up for my iRig because I keep eating up 9 volt batteries and uh, they start getting costly after a while. So basically what I have here is I have a 6 volt um, Radio Shack power supply I had up in the junk bin. I, I seem to collect all the power packs. I don't let my wife throw them away because I feel that you know maybe one day I can use them for something else. Call me a hoarder, call me what you want, but that's what I do. And uh, I got a whole drawer full of power packs down here and I go through them every now and then and do crazy stuff like this all the time. So uh, basically let's get started. So first thing you'd want to do is take whatever power pack you're going to use and just verify what your voltage is that you're getting out of it. So here we have our multimeter. Here's the other end. I'm going to move the 9 volt battery out of the way. So basically we just take, uh, take this guy and you're going to check and see what your voltages are. So give me, uh, i got to figure out, see if I can't do this two ways might be a little hard. I'm going to set the phone here for a second. Let's see if we can't uh, figure out how to do this. I'll be right back. We're back. It was a little fun. I couldn't uh, just put the prongs in there like I wanted to when I tested it earlier. So uh, I rigged up my um, my clippers to plug into it. And as you see, I'm at a good 7.86 volts, which is perfectly fine for the device I'm using. It doesn't naturally need the 9 volts. I've ran it all the way down to 3 volts and it still worked. So I just wanted to kind of be in the middle. But uh, here's this part of it. Now, one thing I want to let you know is we're going to cut this end off. And then we're going to adapt it on to this. Okay. Now, I usually tell people, you know, I mean, if you have it laying around, then you have it laying around. I had this laying around, but I would probably suggest buying new. But that's totally up to you. Uh, and another thing you got to worry about is when you clip this wire, you definitely need to figure out which side you're positive, which side you're negative. You don't want to have them flipped around when you do this deal. We'll be back with an update. Oh, just to let you know, I found this little case here. Seems like it's going to be perfect. I've got to cut it down a little bit, but as you see, it's the same height and the same width. So I think this is going to work out. Old noise toy case. I'm just going to have to cut the case itself down a little bit. So i got to figure out how I'm going to do that and make it the size of a 9-volt battery. We'll be back with an update. One of the first things you probably want to do, depending on what you're going to put it in for a case, I thought a couple different ideas, maybe an old relay case or... Or something of that nature but I ended up finding this I thought about a uh, you know maybe a piece of wood but wood is, is conductive material so you kind of got to watch it uh, you'd have to figure out a way to insulate it somehow and then get the uh, this piece to adapt to it so I didn't really think that was going to be a good idea either and plastic is just perfect so uh, I've got my holes uh, I've got to drill these out I've got it marked where I'm going to cut it down I'm going to use my my uh, little bandsaw that I have. I have a few bandsaws here, so uh, I'm going to cut it down with that. Um, but uh, just wanted to give you all an update and show you what it looks like. I'll be back. We got the holes drilled. Um, now I'm going to take it back on the bandsaw, cut the case down, and uh, we'll get some stuff mounted and bring you back up to date. We'll be back. Got the case cut down. I used a little packing tape to hold it together for right now. So we got our holes drilled. We got it cut in half. Should be the same. Uh, same size as our battery, which we are. So we're good to go there. So it's going to fit in the case. So it's just a matter of rigging everything up and then uh, figuring out uh, what we want to put in this side to block up the hole. Let's think about maybe a piece of foam. I got some foam laying around here. A little old foam block here. 
thing might not work too bad just to uh, keep stuff together that's about all we got to do it ain't got to be fancy nobody's never going to see it when it's up in the battery holder as long as uh, the wires don't come out we'll be back important uh, deal here is uh, when you cut the end off your transformer wire you want to definitely make sure which side is positive and which side's negative so normally your multimeter will tell you which is which uh, right now I have it hooked up on the positive so what I'll do is I'll just take me a little uh, sharpie marker and I'm gonna mark the positive line so when it comes time to solder it all up I know exactly where it is so I just take and put a couple little marks on here it just gives me an idea of where it needs to go so I make sure that we don't reverse the polarity on the device that we're doing now let me switch the ends and I'll show you that the multimeter will tell you that it is hooked up wrong so basically Okay, and as you see there's a negative over here right there so that tells me that it's uh, hooked up backwards so uh, there's a little uh, update um, we're getting ready to start mounting stuff I've got the uh, battery holder uh, shrink tube off of it case is all ready we're gonna get some wiring done and we'll be back update I got it all wired up uh, as you see the voltage is there these are gonna pop off as soon as I move my finger so yep, just what I thought but uh, basically just double checking my work making sure that uh, positives on positive, negatives on negative. Now you gotta be careful when you're wiring these up because actually, if they already come pre-wired, you'll have a red and a black like I did on this one and you don't wanna wire it to that wire. You gotta wire it as a battery. So, you know, when you look at the battery, you look here and you've got your top of your battery, but most batteries are marked with the plus on one side. So the plus is usually the small terminal and the negative is usually the big terminal. So you got to make sure when you wire this up that you use the small for the positive and that for the negative or you could re reverse polarity your device. We'll be back with an update. A little update, uh, we uh, glued in the um, terminal piece into it, got it all wired in. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world but uh, it should do what we need it to do. Uh, that's all that counts. Um, glued in the foam. I just got to put the top half on it and uh, figure out what I'm going to do on the side here to block it and we'll be done. We'll give you an update as soon as we're uh, finished up. We'll be back. Update, uh, hot glue's all dried up. It's uh, together. I used some scotch tape to hold it together for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to remove that uh, here in a minute. But uh, there we go. And on, as far as this side, I really don't need to put anything on it. But I decided to take this clear piece of plastic. I took it out of old packing. I cut it right out of this lid. And I'm going to glue that onto the side just for extra measure. I don't think I really need it once it's inside of something. But uh, I just figured I would do it. Make it look a little bit nicer. But there we go. A 9 volt battery eliminator. Save you some money on them 9 volt batteries. That's what it'll do. Hope you all enjoyed the videos. You all have a great one now. Stick man. I'm gone. In the video on that last note so uh, I figured I'd show you all this thing in action I mean I still have some glue drying but at least this is a way to show you all uh, it working I've got it adapted here to a D104 now the only catch that you may have doing something like this I'm not gonna snap it in the battery holder right now because this glue is drying on the side but uh, you're gonna have to notch when you put your plate up that way you have a place for this wire to feed through but uh, basically, I have it hooked up to my microphone tester. We all know that a D104 lollipop needs to have power. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, hello, hello. And like I said, works great. You don't need the straight 9 volts. And that 8 volts that it's uh, real close to is doing fine. So no problem there. And then I wanted to show it to you in a different device where the battery actually pushes up against it. So uh, basically, uh, I put some marks on the side here plus negative so I know not to screw it up and then uh, I just fit it right down in there like so and then I took the lid already and I notched it so the wire would fit around it and then this guy slides up here and the only thing I have to pay attention for is to make sure that my wire comes through the little slot oh, let me slide it on there correctly first there we go and then as you see closes just fine and then here's the on and off switch. Oops, 
getting ready to drop it. Uh oh. Don't want to do that. But uh, here's the on and off switch. And as you see, the LEDs are on. My phantom power, regular, good to go. So, eliminates me having uh, to keep putting batteries in this sucker because uh, it's been eating up some batteries on me. I hope you all enjoy the videos, man. Uh, I like putting them out there for you guys. This is another one of those D, D, uh, DIY projects that y'all can do uh, yourself at home. Um, you know, uh, if not, if you don't want to take the task on yourself, just give me a ring, man. I'll be more than happy to build you uh, something like this. Um, I'd have to find different kind of cases or something that look a little bit better. But it was just mainly a DIY, uh, do-it-yourself type of video, DIY. Uh, video so uh, you know there you go make you a battery eliminator I know they sell them on eBay so if you don't want to take the time to build one yourself you can get, just get on uh, eBay they're like 40 bucks on eBay uh, remember hit the like button if you like my videos uh, I'll keep putting them up no doubt about it y'all have a wonderful day and if you need anything just give me a shout email at stickman at nonameamps.com or you can call me 301-870-6085 have a great day and we'll see y'all later in the next video. Bye-bye.